So we're here at the login page of uh, Studio. So I will just log in with my user account. And at first here, we are greeted with all the projects currently uh, deployed on the platform. Uh, so here you can go and create new project by clicking up in the right corner here. Here you can select various project templates, um, which means that, for example, MLflow will contain particular services and containerized application uh, for MLflow uh, to track experiments and using a model registry, etc. Fed then here is our federated learning uh, template, which will contain all the services necessary to start a federation. And then you just click here to create and you provide a name and if you want a description of the project. Now I have already done this. So I have my FL demo over here. So we just click on that one. Here you will be greeted with a dashboard uh, which contains basically all of the uh, a good overview of all the services that are being deployed in this project uh, you will also see models and served models in this view uh, if you look to the left here uh, we have in the sidebar federated learning and if you click network you will see the corresponding combiner and reducer which is the centralized components of the federated network we also have some network policies that is for uh, isolating uh, these projects uh, within the, the deployment. Uh, if we go to clients here, uh, this project contains five clients in the federation. So stakeholder client one, etc. Uh, from here, you can copy uh, the configuration for setting up your uh, Fed and client, your federation client. You can either do it by copy and pasting here, or you can download the uh, config file. Uh, these config files uh, will contain a token, so that is specific to the client, so that you're only authenticated to access this particular federated network. And here, down here, you can add new clients. Uh, if we go to the graph here, we get a uh, graph view over the network. So here are the uh, all the clients which are currently online and you can see some information about them. Here is the combiner. So all the clients are connected to one combiner and these can be scaled uh, into different geographical uh, areas, for example. And the reducer is the centralized server, which will contain most of the control flow and uh, do the final aggregations of models. If we go to package here, you can upload the so-called compute package. The co compute package contains the uh, code that will run on the clients. So your definition of machine learning models and how they should be trained is located in the compute package. You will also have to initialize a seed, which means that you initialize the first uh, default weights of your models. Uh, so the current, uh, the first stage of the, your models will be this seed. Uh, I've already done that. Uh, so you can also go to the network here and you can go to uh, the reducer tab, which will contain some more information about the network. Here you can see various logging and events that have occurred. So we can see here that the, the clients has uh, subscribed to a model app update request streams. Uh, you can also see here in models that we have one uh, initial model. This is the seed that I uploaded. And if we go back to studio, we can go to the control tab right here. And we can start a federated learning round. You can give it a session ID. You can give the number of rounds that the training should contain. So let's just make this quite few now to free. Uh, a timeout for the clients if there are 
not available, the timeout would handle that. And here you decide whether you want them to validate on the validation data or not. And then we click start run. The training process is now done. So all the runs has executed on the clients. And I'm back at the reducer site here, the tab for fed and reducer. So here you can see the uh, events that have occurred during the training and validation phase. So you can follow all the logs and see if something went wrong or if uh, something uh, else uh, you want to track. Uh, you can go here to the models and you will see that we now have uh, uh, validation metrics for the training. So here you can select various metrics that is being sent from the clients to the server. So here you can, for example, look at training loss or training accuracy, etc. You can also have a table down here, see the table of uh, how the evolution model trail has been executed. Uh, you can also go to the dashboard here where you will get some uh, information about the uh, processing time uh, during the training. And here you can then see that the training for the execution of the actual training is taking up much of the, the time being processed while model download and model upload takes a very small portion of it. And you have some various other kind of performance metrics that you can uh, validate here. Uh, that was the federation. So I just want to also uh, show you a bit about uh, our MLOps capabilities of how you can life cycle your models and serve the models. So for example, we have uh, Jupyter Notebooks available. So you can, for example, load uh, your models into Jupyter Notebook and create your own uh, plots, etc., of your performance of the models. And you can also create uh, server instances directly from the Jupyter Notebook using our own CLI tool. Uh, from the models tab here, once you have created the model, you can see them here. So actually it acts like a model registry. Uh, here we have various serving capabilities using different types of frameworks. So for example, you can use MFflow to serve models. You can use PyTorch serve and TensorFlow serving. In the store tab here, you have various uh, storage capabilities that you can use. We mainly use Mimeo for many of our tasks, but you can also create the persistent volume claims inside Kubernetes. And there's also a possibility to use uh, Docker registry. Uh, we are also using Mongo Express and MongoDB, and these are mainly the backing services, uh, storage services for uh, our federation. And finally, in the develop tab here, you can deploy an MLflow server, and you can also use VS Code instances to uh, work on your code.